All right, what's up guys? VV back with another video. And in today's video, guys, we're going to be going over some uh, games on The Sim of me playing um, Mono Black Luffy. Um, I've been wanting to play this leader for a while now and finally got around to it, pretty much. So I'm going to go ahead and, you know, hit play. I'm going to turn the speed up to 2x and we can just hop straight, straight into this. Um, I will say that I think this leader is very strong, but one of the biggest issues about playing him is it's kind of hard to justify playing him over some of the other options we have with black. Uh, this package I'm running today is, of course, the Navy package because it's so powerful with a little bit of uh, Dress Rose and CP help. Um, but yeah, going against a Bella Betty to start off here. And, you know, ultimately, I do think having five life against a deck like Bella Betty, a deck that's very aggressive, makes a very big difference. Uh, but okay, so I started off with a brand new search. They swung in for eight, didn't have anything. I swing in for five the following turn, and they get a Satori trigger off the top. Uh, they're down to three life now. <clears throat> I dropped down a Borsalino. I could have definitely played out, um, you know, like Rebecca and like just tried to fill up the board with a little minor blocker, but you can get way more value out of that card later. Okay, so they swing 8k. I, 2K, I get two 2ks out because the idea is you can't use Rob Lucci unless you have three or more cards in your trash, right? You, you can't use Lucci's effect without it. Okay, and one thing I will say, guys, is I have not played this, um, I, I don't play, um, I haven't played this leader, like, pretty much at all. This is my first time ever playing it. So I do make a few play mistakes here and there where I could have gotten a little bit better value out of my cards. Um, but we get this done here, attach the Dawn to Luffy, swing six at leader, and he 2Ks out, or, uh, yeah, the Bella Betty 2Ks out. And the, when, you know, one thing about Red, Yellow, uh, Bello Betty is they try to hit this critical mass. That was big there. They swung with, um, I think his name's Lindbergh, and he can KO a 3K or less. Uh, not ideal, obviously, in swinging in for what they're swinging in for. But I need to take some of these hits and then just start eating up the board. And that, that's pretty much my best case, best case scenario here. Um, I will put the, the deck down in the comment section below like I always do. Looks like I, I kind of want to... Um, do the trade here because I don't have enough counter in hand realistically and it's like okay if I trade here I can just get Rebecca to, to pull back my Borsalino if I need it because you don't want to go too low in case they have any kind of uh, you know random Luffy follow up or something like that so swing 7 at their 5k character and this is this was a mistake not playing out something from my hand first so that I could get a Dawn onto my leader effect because Luffy's leader effect can only grab a card or grab a dawn if you if one is rested. It, it can't grab it from characters if, if it's attached. It has to be rested dawn. So, I mean, I still got a swing seven and the damage went through. So it, it was a small play mistake, but it was a play mistake, right? So you do have to be sure, you know, always be honest with yourself. Okay, he's gonna swing for 6K at me. I have no blocker, so I just take it. But you always have to be honest with yourself. Like don't, don't you know, don't lie to yourself, right? Like, oh, you know, I could have made, some, made another play there. It's not a big deal. It's like, no, it, yeah, it might not have been a big deal, but. When you make a play mistake, call it out and just roll with it, right? Go, go on to the next game. All right, so I swing out here, and he does a um, the the uh, hormone, the three-cost hormone event to, to block out, to play out a blocker. He blocks with a blocker. I'll swing for seven here, and I'm just going to swing nine at life. And my thoughts are, okay, and he counters out. My thoughts are if he counters out of this, well, it's not really a big deal, right? There's just no way he can, he can get through next turn because I have like 10K in counter in hand, right? So just no, no way for him to get out of that. Okay, next game. So next one here, we got against a Rosinante. <clears throat> um, this was an interesting one. I actually think Rosinante does very well into this deck personally, but you know you'll see our, you'll see what I mean over the course of this game. Um, and it will always depend on one thing I noticed when I was playtesting is like if I get brand new early on to fill up my trash for Rob Lucci then I'm probably going to have at least a decent game. But if you don't get brand news early with this list, it does feel a little bit shabby. And I do run, I do run the, um, I think I run three Sabos, two or three Sabos, if not four, I can't remember exactly. Uh, but Sabo does help out quite a bit. So I try to swing six into um, the, the baby five here, and he just blocks it with his leader's effect. Play out um, my, my brand new. I don't go for the 2K counter. I go for removal here because I have no removal in hand. The 2k counter would have been fine, but I'd rather have removal since I don't currently have any in my hand. 
Okay. And they're up to, um, what is that, about 10 cards in hand right now or 9 cards. Or maybe, maybe it's 8 or 9. I don't know. I run Isho in the deck, but I'm going to be honest. I didn't have, like, insane amounts of uh, success with Isho. The 8-cost Isho that makes them trash, too, if, if they have a... Uh, if they have, uh, Oh, sorry, guys. Let me put this on 2x speed, guys. I was like, man, this game is going so slow. But, yeah, the, the brand new... Or, excuse me, the Isho just never really comes in too clutch from uh, from what I've seen lately. It's like... It, well, I should, I should specify. The card's either insane or it's insanely bad. It's one of those cards where it, it does feel kind of kind of lackluster at times. Okay, so they're establishing a little blocker board here. They did not use their... They did not use their um, Baby Fives effect because they can't stand their, their Rosinante leader this turn if they were to do it because they had too many cards in hand, right? Because you have to have six or less cards in hand. I believe it's six. Six or seven, I can't remember. I think it's six or less cards in hand in order to, to restand your leader. Honestly, in that situation, I think it would have just been better to not swing with your leader and get the, the card draw from your baby five. That, that's just me personally. Okay, let's see what they choose to uh, do here. So, swing six into um, Borsalino. I'm uh, just going to 2k counter out of that. I don't want to lose my Borsalino here. So, so, I do think about this turn for a little bit because in my mind, I'm thinking, okay, how much do I care about this sugar? Because I can just play out uh, Sakazuki and KO the sugar right away, right? But, but how much does it really matter to me? Like, okay, is he going to tap down my Borsalino? Because because I don't, I don't really care. You know what I mean? Like, ultimately, I'm not really I'm not really concerned about that. So I'm like, okay, I'm just actually just going to go face here. So let's go six with um with Brandum. That's going to eat up one of his blockers. And I've got four left. Let's see what we do here. Just stack it up. Nine to face. All right. And then I think, yeah, then it's my opponent's turn. And again, this is the situation where like, okay, I need him to play something so I can get some kind of value for my Sakazuki. Okay, swings swings five into brand new. That's I'm not defending that. He red rocked my my uh, Borsalino. That that's what I was gonna say. Like I run Sabos and Borsalinos, so like him having you know I don't know if he has three thousand worlds, but we just saw red rock. Like those are pretty good answers to what I'm running, right? Like <laughs> those are not bad answers to what I'm running. So um, I don't have any uh, what's his name Rob Lucci's. So this does feel awful. And then look what happens. I play out Virgo because I'm like you know what. He, is he going to use a Red Rock on my Virgo? I seriously doubt it. And he just quits. So unfortunately, we don't get to see that game to its full conclusion. But I do think that uh, Rosinante has a pretty good matchup into what we were doing there. Okay, next up, we got Kaido. Let me uh, turn the speed up. I run, a, I run against all kinds of crazy decks on here. This is another one where, um, you know, how do I say this? This was another one where my opponent... I think my opponent makes a mistake and basically just kind of bails on this game. Just kind of give me all a heads up. And you'll see what I mean. And notice I am running Shanks. I did not get off any crazy Shanks, um, you know, uh, you know how do you say it, like, effects this game. But I do think there's some potential there. I do think there's some potential for Shanks. So he swings five. You see he plays out this uh, Sasaki guy here. I'm like, okay, I'm just going to get rid of that. Get rid of my Shanks. Swing six at life. He 2k counters out. And something happens this game. I can't remember. So, so he fills out the whole board here. Drops down a bunch of uh, dudes. A bunch of three-cost three, three cost dudes. Swing five. And I'm thinking, okay, I probably should counter out of this because of his leader effect. being like he, look, look at the dawn he's at. He's at 10 dawn already. I'm still at like seven or something or eight. <clears throat> so I swing seven. Play out. Um, I should have played out a Borsalino first. Then swung with, with uh, Sakazuki. Just in case he blocked with his... Uh, with his, his uh, wire blocker here so right there he accidentally passed the turn and it was like oh man like what do you do? in that situation it was just a simple like misclick on his part but he passed his last turn to me without doing anything so i just go okay well let's just end the game then like like you might as well leave at that point right and i've done that before too where it's like oops misclick you know gg and you just leave the game because there's no point in staying and see now he's trying to just overcommit because he's at one life i'm at four life he can't deal with my board so I'm like, okay, I'll just eat up most of these, you know, refill my hand, 2K get counter out of this, and I can even just take that one, no big deal, and the game's over. So again, that was one of those situations where my opponent had a misclick, and that's game. You know, unfortunately, unfortunately. All right, so now we got a, a purple, so we went against a, a Rosinante, right? Now we're going against a purple green Doflamingo. And <clears throat> I like my matchup against purple green as black, 
most times. Like, I don't know what it is in particular, but whenever I'm running, whether it be Sakazuki or Black Yellow Lin Lin or this uh, Black Luffy card here, or Black Luffy Leader, I just feel like if you play properly around their tin cost, you have all the answers you need. Like, you have your Borsalinos to get a, get out of any kind of, a, you know, KO effect, because it's, it's only green and purple, right? They're not going to have... The only, the only bottom deck they can even run currently at the time you're recording this video would be like a top knot, and that's if they even run that. So I eat up the board here. He's trying to just draw as many cards as he can. I'm just saving cards in hand and dropping down characters each turn, eating up the little stuff. He draws a birdcage, and I'm fully aware of that. But in my mind, I'm thinking, okay, I kind of want to bait him into using that because I have Sabo. So, like I said, I've got Borsalino against this deck. I've got Sabos. I've got Rebecca to grab stuff back from the trash. I'm just not scared of him, right? I'm just not scared of what he's trying to do with this deck. So, trash two cards. I trash the Shanks and one of my Rebeccas. Um, this game, I really wanted to get down the Kuzan, the 10 cost Kuzan, because I feel like it has such a, uh, it can do a lot, right? Let's just say, if you could establish, I think most people will agree with this, if you can establish the 10 cost Kuzan, he's one of the strongest characters in the game. But it's a matter of establishing him, especially doing it without getting KO'd on the, on the crackback the next turn, or even just having him stick around. Like against Sakazuki decks, he just doesn't really stick around, right? It, it is what it is. Okay, so play out. So I'm, I'm just filling the board up here. He dropped down a birdcage. I'm, I'm just, I'm not really scared of that. You know what I mean? Because I have a Sabo in hand. I have Borsalinos I'm dropping. And, and, you know, everything else I have is like like my Sakazuki and my um, my Kuzan. They're out of range of it anyway. You know, because birdcage can only hit a five or less, I believe. Let me look that up while, while this is all going. I'm, I'm like 99% sure it can just hit a five or less. Okay, bird. So this thing can hit a five or less. Yeah, that's correct. So, and they have to get to 10 Dawn. Now watch what my opponent does here. It's, it's actually very interesting what they do. Um, so they play out these cards that can tap down my board. And I'm like, okay, but if you tap down my character with, with Uda, you'll lose your Uda as well. So I, I'm, I'm kind of fine with that, right? I'm, I'm not really upset. I see he has two Dawn active. I'm thinking, okay, probably going to be a Punk Gibson turn here. But... You know, let's just let's just go ahead and get rid of some of this stuff here. I think I play out the yeah, I play out the Suru here. Sorry guys, I don't remember everything, but it's like play out Suru, KO, KO this guy easily, trash an Isho because it you know he doesn't have any cards in hand, and I'm like okay, you know what? I don't really care about the Uda, but at the same time, let me see what he does this turn. I wanted to see what is he going to do this turn. He plays a Queen to return a Dawn card from hand to delay the effect of Birdcage. Okay, that is awesome, right? Like, that is really cool. You know, he, he attacks in. I block with Borsalino because Borsalino is not going to get KO'd anyway, right? Then he swings for five. And I'm like, <laughs> okay, you basically just threw away your Uda, right? Because just, for those who don't know, Birdcage affects both people's characters. It doesn't just affect yours. It affects both sides. And I'm like, all right, I'm getting rid of the Sabo now. I'm not even going to play around his effect anymore because I've made it to 10 Dawn. Right, so so I'm not I'm I'm no longer concerned with what's going on here. So let's see what happens. I'm going to swing seven into Uda, and this is a situation where he can use the other Uda and return a Dawn to tap down one of my other guys. Okay, and that's what he does, tapping down my Kuzan. Right, and but then he loses the Uda, which he was going to lose anyway from what he did, and I'm like, okay. I think it's time to just drop the big guy, right? I mean, if, if, if you're just going to sit back and not play anything else and just try to wipe my board as efficiently as you can, I'm just going to do this. Yeah, I'm going to drop this 10 cost. You can't get rid of my Sakazuki because he's a 6 cost. And now, even if he plays, like, um, even if he plays out the 10 cost Doflamingo here, and which, which it looks like that's what he's going to do, even if he plays that out, I'm not really concerned. I take this damage... He'll KO literally just my Kuzan here. Just just my four cost Kuzan, and he'll lose his Uda. So again, I'm just not really worried. Okay, so he does a quick cycle with Queen because he doesn't want to lose the, the Uda yet. He wants to get as much value as he can out of this bird cage. Because it is at least tapping down my characters, right? There is something to be said there. But it's tapping down his as well. So I, I don't really know if it's like a decent enough trade. Get out a uh, Rob Lucci, and that's gonna clean up like the whole pretty much the whole board because of how Kuzan is, right? And, and that's that's a wrap at that point. And, and one thing I will say is, I think there's almost no point to run Shanks anymore, just ever. Because even if you can drop the board, and he just quits right there, good game. Even if he were to drop, like, how do I say this? If I can establish Kuzan, 
like yes, technically Shanks could KO more targets potentially, but Rob Lucci's going to probably be able to KO what you need, and it's and it's five dawn less. Okay, and I think we got one more game, guys. Let me go to that one versus Red Purple Law. This was an interesting one here. Let me go to 2x speed. All right, we're good. Okay, so it looks like I got to go second, which is what I want. Now, I didn't get brand new, unfortunately. And I do have to take this first life because I don't want to get rid of anything. I mean, I only had a 2k and, and a porcelain, you know. And, and in this matchup, it's true that... Okay, and he comes out really hot out of the gates with uh, with um, Zoro. So I have to end up trashing one of the Borsalinos anyway. So, you know, it is what it is. But in this matchup, yes, he can get rid of Borsalino very easily with, like, a, 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 um, a Gordon. But is that really a big deal, right? Is it like, like, sure, go ahead and do what you have to do, but I still need to establish that card and at least make you start getting rid of some, some of your Dawn. You know, you, 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 again, you have to do what you have to do. So when he plays out Eustace Kid here, I know that that is a desirable thing to do, but now I know I'm safe. Does that make sense? It's like, okay, I no longer am in fear of this turn. I block one attack for free with my Borsalino I just put down. He's, he's basically already paid for himself because otherwise, you know, that's a 1k counter out of hand. And I still have him. He's just getting extra value. He swings for five. He's probably going to use the leader effect here, which he should have done first, by the way, after seeing my attack. So he could swing for six, but it wouldn't have mattered because I 2k countered out anyway. Okay, so now back to my turn. And I'm thinking, all right, I'm just going to Eat up your the, the the Eustace kid, trash a card from hand. I think I trashed the yeah I trashed the Lucci because I'm like okay I have Rebecca just in case I need to get it back right. Hina was probably the better call there to be completely honest, but ultimately I don't think it matters if you're trying to do the Hina uh, you know the Rebecca Hina combo with Lucci. It, it just doesn't matter as long as one's in the trash. You're going to grab one back and you still have to play the 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 Lucci hard cast anyway. Okay, so let's see what my opponent does here. He's deep in the tank. I, remember, guys, I do have it on 2x speed. It's just, you know, there, there's just, uh, he, he's got to make some some big decisions here. And he's only down to three cards. I've, eat, I've eaten up his board. He can't even get full value from Trafalgar Law, purple, you know, blocker Trafalgar Law. But he is able to remove my um, my Rob Lucci. Okay, and now smash him for seven. I'm going to take this. You know, it's going to give me an extra card in hand. And now we're going into turn eight. And I'm like, okay, well, I can play out a Rebecca to minus one of these guys and you know go from there so it's first swing seven see if i can eat up a blocker it's like okay which by the way again that's just not not really the right play because like with, with my leader if i want to get any kind of um you know don you know tricks with my leader's ability you should do this first and and get it but either way both my attacks went through so it ended up not mattering but just speaking as like the correct way to play that's how you should do it notice i played out a brand new there because i i'm not really I don't think he's going to commit with these blockers because I'm on the the aggro and I have two blockers down. So I'm not really worried about his blockers trying to trying to finish me off when I have three life and I have five cards in hand. Now, he doesn't know I only have one 2k counter and one 1k counter, but you still have to play, you know, to the best of your ability. So in this situation, it's like, does he really want to take the, the gamble and leave himself exposed swinging out with these blockers? Okay. Just block with Rebecca. Not worried about it. And let's see what he does here. Uh, he's not used his leader effect yet, so he can still... Let's see what he does. He can. I'll say he can swing for five, but I'll just block with Borsalino. So let's see what he does. I think he attacks brand new. No, no, he just lets it go. So he passes turn. I'm like, okay, well, I know what I'm going to do here. KO that, get my leader effect, swing for seven, see if I can get an additional leader effect if he blocks, which he is thinking about. You can see he's really thinking about it. And he does, so I get to put an extra dot on there and swing for seven. Trying to do things correctly, and again, I, I'm sure I made plenty of mistakes in these in these games because I don't play any. I've never played Black Luffy before, the mono Black Luffy, the starter deck Luffy. Uh, but hey, it, it was a lot of fun. I, I can see where the leader can be potentially very strong because it's using the you know it's it's using all the best cards from Black that have removal baked in, and it just benefits from that. Like okay, well. If I KO a character, I get plus 1,000 to my leader for the turn, right? It, like, that's kind of the logic there. Okay, bottom deck's uh, my blocker. And I know he's he's dead here. Like, I, I know there's pretty much no chance for my opponent at this point because I have too much life, and now he's starting to attack my board. I'm like, sure, you can have it because that actually doesn't matter to me, right? And then he's, okay, swings for five. Because remember, I still have Rebecca, 
Okay, he's going to swing for five more. I need to counter out of this one. I don't want to get too greedy. Okay. So let's see what I do here. I was going to say, I have Rebecca and Lucian Trash. Like Rebecca in hand, Lucian Trash. We'll snag that back. We'll play out a Hina for free per the Rebecca's effect. Play out the Luchi, KOing the two active characters and use my leader's effect twice. Smash into this for five, and I'm just going to eat up his hand or his board, and the game is... There's no way out from here, right? Like, y'all see what's going on. There's just no way out for my opponent. Five here, seven here, and then it's going to be ten, and you have nothing on the board, and, you know, it's going to be a wrap. There's just no way out of it. Okay. <clears throat> so let's see what he does. Technically speaking, I should have swung... Uh, let me pause real quick. Technically speaking, I should have swung with my Kuzan first to get the extra Dawn on my Luffy to get the highest possible swings. Because he was sitting on one Dawn. He could have Rad Beamed out, if I'm not mistaken. I could be wrong about that. Right, guys, that's about it. Uh, like I said, this you know this was a lot of fun playing this leader. I, it's, it's my first time ever playing uh, Mono Black Luffy like this. But I really enjoyed it. You know, Maybe in the future, I, I, hopefully it gets a little more support. Um, because as is, you know, Gecko Moria is probably about to take the spot of any any kind of mono black possibilities uh, in OP06. So, but who knows? In the future, maybe there'll be some more straw hat support for for mono black, and this leader might get some love then. All right, guys, that's about it. If you got any comments or questions, please don't hesitate to put them in the in the uh, comment section below. And if I missed anything, y'all help me out. Y'all know the drill. And I uh, hope y'all enjoyed. And please don't forget to like and subscribe. And until next time, guys, peace.